Alright, so um, <coughs> Vishnu, Alishin, Ranjan, Abeba, myself, and Chan Wai, I think most of us are like five out of six are here. So um, if you are interested, I will, on each slide I actually will indicate uh, the work of the individual uh, uh, PIs. So if you are interested in a particular topic, please seek us out uh, after the talks. And I should also say this is only a subset of uh, faculty in the College of Engineering who actually do robotics and automation work that are relevant to this subject. And uh, also, I should say, some of the stuff that you see here is already covered, or part of that is covered by some other engineering colleagues. So you see the uh, overlapping and so on. So that's. Um, so basically, the, this talk is about how robotics and automation will be able to help out, uh, maybe for different purposes of this initiative. Uh, the first uh, kind of set of slides deal with sensing, how ro robots can help out uh, with gathering information. Uh, the first one is autonomous sensor network. This is, uh, uh, I have the people listed here. Uh, Li Xing Dong and, uh, uh, and a few, uh, several other people, and I think many of them are here. Uh, the idea is to have drones not only carrying sensors like imagers on themselves to gather information, but also uh, you can use drone to do actuation, for example, to place sensor in the soil or move around the sensors, and then maybe carry out also uh, picking samples from the soil or from a plant and transport uh, the transport the samples to some devices. For example, the, the previous talk we heard about smartphones, you know, detecting uh, lab on chip and smartphones, processing uh, analysis and so on. So uh, there are a few possible sensors, I think uh, some are specific to uh, uh, our, uh, some of our family members here, uh, to measure different gases like nitrogen or water vapor and the lab on chip uh, to analyze uh, diseases, toxins, and um, and some other things. Right, so, uh, aerial robotic sampling, I think this is a group of people involving uh, Bruno and Daniel Morris, Ranjan, and Martin Chivers. So here the idea is sometimes it's probably not so easy to just go and grab information because some information is uh, is hidden under the canopy, uh, canopy mm -hmm. and you have to get in, get down there so one idea they have, I think they actually already have a proposal out uh, to NSF, is to have a drone with a suspended manipulator, and that can be basically moved around, lower at certain depth, and you can use vision, computer vision or cameras to look at what leaves you want to click, for example. Um, monitoring of agricultural runoff. Now, that's related to the environmental side of the agriculture. And when you have the, uh, the cows and other uh, farm animals, of course, their animal waste and uh, their feeds and so on will get into water. And then, of course, fertilizers, uh, pesticides, and so on for crops will be run off into lakes and rivers and streams. And uh, they have these kinds of runoffs will have tremendous impact on the environmental health as well as human health. Right? So we would like to be able to monitor those. And some of this, actually, uh, most of this down here is uh, my group's work. Uh, we have uh, underwater robots that can carry different sensors monitoring different variables of the water. Uh, you can think about mounting neutron sensors uh, and uh, other types of like uh, water quality sensors on there. And this is a different type of robots. It's not a fish light. It's more like a propeller driven. We call ROVs, remotely operated underwater vehicles. And uh, recently, we actually this is work with Irene from the civil engineering, civil and environmental engineering. Uh, so we kind of retrofitted the viral sampler. They used to have to have a big car to push around to uh, the water source to to collect uh, such a, uh, a viral samples. Now. We kind of 
change it so that it can be managed to uh, these robots. And this is a water sam sample uh, sampling device. Uh, you actually can have the robots go to the right positions, or locations, and at the right time to gather water samples and come back. Uh, so these, those are just a few slides representative of what kind of tools ro robotics can provide to collect uh, either kind of real-time information or samples. Uh, but now, with all the data, of course, ultimately you want knowledge, you want information and knowledge, and then I think uh, Bruno says wisdom, and then uh, I forgot what was the last one. Solution, yes. Okay, I think the, that's a really good idea. Uh, so this is uh, Vishnu, Vishnu and uh, Veba. So basically, I know like Xiaoming and a few others uh, also do a lot of work in learning and, uh, and uh, basically uh, sensor um, these kinds of work. So again, this is just a representative of what engineers can provide. Um, so once you have the data, you can form 3D maps and over time, which basically is a kind of 4D spatial temporal modeling. And then from there, you can apply learning and time series analysis techniques to really extract the information. Like, of course, this is just one example from the imagery taken by uh, aerial drones. What can you extract over time? And uh, there's one more thing about, okay, after sensing, we look at some manipulation. Of course, one manipulation is to uh, picking, picking uh, the fruits. I think. Uh, Renfu was talking about very cool apple uh, handling sorting machine, but here you have these ro robotic arms to collect, I think, the citrus. Um, and of course, ideally, once you have these robots to deal with uh, these kind of fragile, uh, uh, delicate objects, you want uh, something soft. So, uh, soft robotics is a kind of emerging trend uh, right now in the field of robotics. Uh, so some of our work actually starts to look into soft actuation, meaning uh, you have very soft like this. It's very made of mostly silicone, silicone material, and once it's actuated, it can have very light deformation to build such uh, such manipulators. Uh, my colleague Tran Wan, who does flexible and stretchable electronics, uh, basically sensors like pressure sensors and uh, photo detectors and other types of uh, temperature sensors made on these soft kind of substrates. So now you can integrate such sensors with those uh, actuators to form almost like very, just like human-like manipulators, like hands. You can handle these, uh, handle these uh, fruits and vegetables and crops with care. Of course, once we have robots in the field or interacting with uh, crops, we, look, we need to look at human-robot interaction, uh, collaboration. So uh, I have only, this is my second to last slide. Uh, so in one case, of course, you have these heavy farm machines, and all, many of these are already autonomous, right? Autonomous trucks and autonomous tractors, and uh, you want to make sure these guys do not hit the workers and farmers um, by accident, right? So there's issue of situational awareness. Uh, how do you observe from LIDAR or vision sensors and detect and localize different objects, okay, vehicles and robots and uh, pets, dogs and things like that, right? And then you want to plan and to, to avoid some uh, issues when you have lots of robots actually on a farm. Uh, the other issue regarding human and robots is sometimes you want human to collaborate with robots because robots cannot make full decisions they are not humans, right? We are the best. So, um, how much autonomy you allocate to to robots? How much you, you preserve for humans? Right. So, uh, my uh, relatively new colleague Weber is an expert in that area. He looks into what's the best strategy to divide the autonomy among uh, among you know, among us and the robots. So, I have really covered a lot of different things without getting into the details. Of course, the idea is to show some activities, expertise, and sometimes ideas uh, through this quick talk. Uh, if we say, what are the challenges? I think uh, the challenge for us here is that we have a lot of hammers, and we're looking for the nails, and that's, uh, I think that's why we have a lot of the uh, experts in this room. Thank you.